Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Muddy Mint. Today, we're going to be talking about super fat. So I get a lot of questions in my email and in Instagram about all kinds of soap making topics. But one of the most common questions that I get is about super fat. It seems like a lot of people don't really understand why they're using a super fat, how much super fat to use and how super fat works in soap calc. So today we're going to cover all of that. All right, so to get started, what is a super fat? A super fat is basically just extra free floating oils in your soap. The reason the oils are free floating is because they haven't reacted with the lye. So when you're making soap, you have oils and you have lye, and you need a certain amount of lye to turn those oils into soap. So if you have more oil than necessary or more oil than the lye needs in order to react to make soap, you're going to end up with some free floating oils in that soap. And a lot of people talk about how those free floating oils are really great for moisturizing your skin and things like that. But there's actually a real reason why super fat even exists. So to understand why we use a super fat in soap making, you have to go back to saponification values. And if you're newer to soap making, you may not know much about this, but every single oil has a saponification value. So olive oil has a saponification value of 0.135. So what this means is that if you have 100 ounces of olive oil, for instance, you need to multiply that amount by 0.135 to figure out the lye amount. So it's basically a really simple math equation. And when you go into a soap calculator or lye calculator like soap calc, that's exactly what it's doing. It's taking the amount of olive oil that you have in your recipe, multiplying that amount by its saponification value, 0.135, and then figuring out how much lye you need to use. So in the case of 100 ounces of olive oil, you'd be using 13.5 ounces of lye in order to turn all that olive oil into soap. So if you have 100 ounces of olive oil and you use 13.5 ounces of lye, you're gonna turn every single molecule of that oil into soap. It's going to be turned into soap and glycerin, which is a byproduct of that chemical reaction. So in soap making, that's called saponification. And if you convert all that olive oil into soap, then that's great. But the issue is that saponification values are actually averages. So even though the saponification value of olive oil is 0 0.135, that's an average. And that's because there's all kinds of different olive oil. You can get your olive oil from different parts of the world. It's processed differently. So the olive oil that you end up having in your soap studio might not necessarily have an exact saponification value of 0 0.135. It could be a little bit less, which means you need less lye to saponify it. Or it could be a little bit more, which means you need more lye to saponify it. So let's say you're making soap and you have an olive oil and it's extra virgin olive oil and you use a saponification value of 0 0.135. Well, what happens if your olive oil, the one that you have in your soap studio, actually has a saponification value of 0 0.134? It might not seem like that big of a difference, but if you're using exactly 13.5 ounces of lye, you're actually going to end up with a lye-heavy soap. Because basically what you've done is you've used a little bit too much lye in order to turn that olive oil into soap. So then you're going to end up with free floating lye in your soap, which isn't what you want. You want all that lye to be completely eliminated so that when the end user is using your bar of soap, it's safe and effective and you don't have to worry about a lye heavy soap. So to resolve this issue of average saponification values, being a thing basically, and you don't know unless you calculate yourself in a lab what the saponification value of your oil is, you pretty much have to use the average because that's all that we have. When you're using the average, you want to be aware that it's actually an average and it's not an exact value. And that's where super fat comes in. So super fat is adding a little bit of extra oil to your soap in order to ensure that if there's an error in that saponification value, that it is covered. So you are covered, you won't end up with a bunch of extra lye. And so 5% super fat is kind of the standard that people use. People say, you know, sometimes they say three to 5%. I like to do 
and five to seven is kind of what a lot of soap makers use. So super fat is adding more oil to your soap. And that way you have less lye and then you are safe because the chemical reaction will happen and you'll still have a little bit of oil left over. Now, there's another term that's often used that basically does the exact same thing. And that term is lye discount. So if you think about it, if you've got oil and you've got lye, in order for that safety margin to happen, you can either add more oil, your lye will react and then there'll be some oil left over, or you can lower the amount of lye you're using and then you'll automatically have more oil. These two terms are interchangeable. Super fat is adding more oil, lye discount is reducing the lye. They're accomplishing the exact same thing, except they're slightly different techniques. And here's where the issue comes in. Because if you go into soap calc, you'll see that it says super fat. 5% is what's in there by default. But when you go to calculate your soap, you don't actually see your oils increasing. And this is where people get really confused because when you add in a super fat of 5%, you'd expect all your oils to go up just a little bit, but they don't. And that's because soap calc actually uses a lie discount. So when you're in soap calc and you're putting in all your oils and then you put in your super fat of 5%, it'll spit out a lie amount. But then if you increase your super fat to say 6% and you recalculate you'll go back in and you'll see that your lye amount is actually less. So super fat and lye are inversely related. So if your super fat's going up, the lye is going down. So what SoapCalc is really doing is they're implementing a lye discount. So I've had quite a few people ask me, like, it looks like soap, you know, I put my information into SoapCalc and I didn't see the oils going up. Do I need to add my super fat on top of what's already there as part of the calculation? And the answer is no. Soap Calc figures that out for you, but it does that by implementing a lye discount. So that's something that you really need to know if you're a newer soap maker, that Soap Calc is really doing a lye discount, which accomplishes the exact same thing as a super fat. It's just a different way to go about it. So just to reiterate, the super fat and lye discount accomplish the exact same thing in a slightly different way. So it makes sense that soap calc doesn't use super fat because otherwise it would have to take your entire recipe, increase every single oil just enough to make up that 5%. And that's kind of a lot of work. So instead what they do is they keep your oils exactly the same so you don't have to worry about changing your recipe. And what they do is they do a lye discount. So then the lye goes down, which is effectively creating a super fat. All right, so where did this idea of super fat come from in the first place? other than the saponification values of different oils being an average, so you need to be able to add more oil, but why not just do a lye discount? Like where did this idea of super fat even come from? And it turns out that a lot of soap makers in the past would actually add their super fat at trace. So here's what they're trying to accomplish. If you can increase the amount of oil in your recipe in order to ensure that there's, you know, all that lye is used up, why not choose that oil? So why not have shea butter be the oil that, you know, sits on your skin when you're using your bar of soap rather than just a random oil from your recipe? So the idea of choosing your super fat is a really nice idea. And people used to do this all the time. They would make their soap with the average saponification value. So they use the exact right amount of lye that they need. And then they take their 5% and at trace, they would drizzle that in, you know, that nice oil, whether it's jojoba or, you know, usually it was something luxurious. Throw that in, mix it up, and then the idea is that you have your soap and then the super fat is made up of a particular oil. So I think this concept of super fat rather than lye discount became popularized because of that, because of this idea of being able to choose your super fat or choose the oil that's going to be remaining in your bar of soap. And this was actually debunked by Kevin Dunn. And if you don't know Kevin Dunn, he's wrote a book called, I think it's called Scientific Soap Making or something like that. But basically he's a soap maker and also a scientist. And so he did some experimentations on this. He actually took a, by the way, I'll link his article down below in the description so you can read it for yourself. He took a soap that was made up of some oils and he did a lie discount. And then he made that exact same soap with a super fat that was added at trace. 
And then after the soap was all made, he looked at the chemical composition of both of those soaps and he found them to be virtually identical. So what he discovered is that whether you do a lye discount or a super fat, it doesn't actually make a difference. So you can't really pick and choose your super fat and cold processed soap. Now, maybe you can do it in hot processed soap. Hot process is a different process and that allows you to cook everything first and then you could potentially add your super fat after. And it might be more likely to stick because you're actually cooking everything first. So you're, you're making saponification happen a lot faster. And so if saponification happens faster, then all the lye has probably reacted. And then you're adding your super fat. So it might work in hot process. But for cold process, there really isn't that much time between the time that you're mixing your oils and lye and then adding something at trace. So unless you know exactly what's happening on a molecular level, that lye is reacting in, you know, it may react with certain oil molecules quicker than others, but it turns out that no matter when you add your super fat, it doesn't really matter. So the reality is that it makes way more sense to do a lye discount. For one thing, it's a lot less work. It's easier to calculate and that's how soap calc does it for you anyway. All right, so hopefully that all made sense. So a super fat and a lye discount are very similar. And soap calc basically uses a lye discount when they're doing their calculations. So you don't need to add that oil afterwards. It's already built into the calculation. So all you have to do is make your soap and use the amount of lye that's specified in the calculator. All right, so what about how much super fat to use? What should you be using for your super fat? And a lot of people recommend that you use 5% as a beginner. And I think that's a great starting point. Basically, super fat is a really individual thing. Some people love a high super fat soap and some people love a lower super fat soap. So I personally really like soaps that are between five and 6% super fat. And again, super fat is that extra free floating oil that's sitting in the bar. So when you're washing yourself with that bar of soap, you know, the lye has reacted with all the oils and made the soap part. And then any oils that the lye has not reacted with, which is the extra oil that you have in your soap, that's going to stay on your skin. And so that is really nice because it allows your skin to feel a lot nicer and more moisturized after you use your bar of soap. So the more oil that you have left in your bar of soap, the more you'll get that sort of oily feeling on your skin afterwards. And some people really like that. They love to feel like after they take a shower, they've got this, you know, nice layer of oil, basically, you know, it's just a little bit because the super fat is not that much, but you do definitely feel it. And when I use a high super fat soap, I can tell because you can kind of feel like it almost feels like the soap hasn't fully washed off, which is why I'm not a huge fan of a high super fat soap because I want to feel like, you know, after I rinse off, I don't want to feel like I have a layer of something on my skin. And that's just personal preference. Some people really like that feeling. So I would say start at 5% or 6%, somewhere in there, and you can go up to 7%. Play around with it and see what you think. Try some different super fats and kind of get a feel for what's your favorite super fat. Again, this is a really personal thing. You also want to keep in mind that when you're using milk in your soaps, you're actually increasing the super fat just a tiny bit. It's not something that you necessarily need to calculate. I had somebody on um, our YouTube channel asking about that. Like, do, how do I calculate how much super fat the milk is adding to the soap? And you don't really need to. It's kind of negligible anyway, but it is going to increase the super fat a little bit. So we use a lot of milk in our soaps. And so that's probably another reason why we could try to keep our super fat a little bit lower because we're actually... You know, in some cases, we're even mixing oil with our colorants and things like that. So we're inadvertently adding, you know, small amounts of super fat here and there, and it sort of starts to add up. Okay, so is there a reason to use a higher super fat? And the answer is yes. So when you're in soap calc, there are going to be certain oils like coconut oil that are high in cleansing. And what this means isn't necessarily that the soap is going to clean you better it's that it actually is sort of stripping on your skin. So coconut oil, even though it's a great oil to put on your skin, you know, just in its raw format, when coconut oil is saponified, it actually becomes drying. 
And so a uh, soap that is high in coconut oil is going to be quite drying. So I like to use, you know, between 20 and 25% coconut oil, which gives plenty of hardness and good lather and that kind of stuff. But if I start to creep over 25%, I will definitely increase my super fat to take into account the extra cleansing. So if you're thinking about, you know, cleansing, being stripping of the oils on your skin, you want to add that oil back on your skin so you don't feel super dry after you're done using the bar. In fact, you can make a bar that's 100% coconut oil and use a super fat between 20 and 30%, which seems astronomically high. But that is the way to make a coconut oil soap that's 100% coconut oil, but isn't drying. Some people might still find it drying, but I actually find it really nice. We use 20% when we make our 80% coconut oil soap. And I might bump it up a little bit more if I was using 100% coconut oil. But when you do that, you're basically adding that oil back onto your skin with that high super fat. All right, so another thing to think about with super fat is that those oils that are sitting on the bar, they're basically free floating and they can go rancid. So if an oil is just sitting out, then it's gonna go bad over time. And so if you take the lowest shelf life of the oil in your soap, so the, the oil that has the lowest shelf life in your bar of soap, that's gonna be the shelf life of your soap because of the super fat. So what's nice about the coconut oil soap is that coconut oil has a high shelf life. And so that means that when you're using coconut oil as a super fat, it's not likely to go rancid. Now, there are ways to prevent the oil from going rancid. You can use rosemary, rosemary oleoresin extract, ROE, um, in your soap, which apparently helps. And there are other techniques to ensure that your oils don't go rancid, or to actually, not to ensure they don't go rancid, but to help things along so that they last a little bit longer. But the higher your super fat is, the more you need to think about the rancidity of your oils. When those oils are just sitting there and they're not saponified, then things are going to go rancid over time. So what that means is that your, you know, your bar might start to smell. You might get like, like it starts to smell like old oil. Um, you might start to get DOS, which is the dreaded orange spot. So if you see little orange spots on your soap after a certain amount of time, it's probably that your super fat oils are going bad um, or going rancid. So the main thing that you can do to prevent that is to just use fresh oils. You know, especially if you're making soap not very frequently and you have oil sitting around for a long time, make sure that's stored properly in a cool, dry place and that you use it within the allocated amount of time. Because if it's sitting there in your bar of soap, um, free floating, then it is gonna go bad. So the fresher your oils, the less likely that is to happen. All right, I hope that all makes sense. I hope you have a little bit more insight into super fat. If you have any questions about anything, definitely let me know. And if you haven't seen our video on water discounting, definitely check that out next because it's just another one of those confusing terms in the soap making world. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Bye.